Hi guys and welcome back to another What's For Dinner. My name is Crystal and if you enjoy watching What's For Dinner videos, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button. As well as don't forget you can always share this video with your friends and family and also on your social media just by clicking the share button. Also, if you recreate any of these meals, please feel free to tag me on Instagram or Facebook using the hashtag that I will be putting here because I love seeing all the pictures and food that you guys are recreating. So let's get started. So on this day, I was having a surprise birthday party for my aunt that my cousin planned. I was in charge of baking a few treats, so I made these chocolate cover, cover pretzels. I also made some chocolate cover marshmallows and as well as some red velvet cupcakes. Very simple but very cute with the black and gold theme. If you guys are interested in sh me showing you guys how I make these because I did film it, let me know down in the comments so I could film it. Also too, if you guys are interested to actually see how we pulled off the surprise, we actually did film this on our family channel called Familia Adventures. I will link the video in the description as well as in the icon card so if you want to go check it out and I do want to say thank you guys so much to everybody who's already gone over there we appreciate you guys so much for stopping by that channel and supporting it so if you guys want to see more of our family and more of what's going on or if you just want to see this video that video is already up and I will put it down in the description as well as in the in the i card So for the dinner, we had this creamy chipotle chicken, pasta, a roll, and a salad that was so delicious. I really need to get that recipe. As well as there is my uncle. My uncle currently has cancer. I do share updates on there um, about him in that video. That's my husband and my mother-in-law and also my father-in-law. So if you guys want to see updates on my uncle, I will have all that information in that uh, video. So thank you guys for your prayers. They're much appreciated. So on this day, we're going to be making some enchiladas verdes. This is my mother-in-law's recipe. And we're going to start by cooking the chicken. I'm going to be using half of an onion and also some garlic cloves. I do have a chicken thigh in there with the bone on. She usually uses chicken breast with the bone. But since my chicken breast was skinless and boneless, I am adding that thigh with the bone on just to give it flavor to our broth because we will be using this chicken broth to be flavoring our sauce as well as to make our Mexican red rice. I'm also going to be adding some salt. I'm going to let this cook between 40 minutes to an hour until the chicken is fully cooked. If you do not have um, chicken with the bone on, I've seen her use chicken legs. Pretty much you just want a bone in there just to really flavor it up because later on we will be shredding this chicken to use for our enchiladas verdes as well. And now to get started on our sauce, we're going to be using two pounds of tomatillos. These are what tomatillos look like. They come wrapped with this and they have like a waxy texture. So you have to peel them. Some people peel them inside the store to make sure they're good. But I usually buy them in these bags like this in the 99 cent store. And then I peel them at home. And then you want to give them a nice good clean because like I said, they have like a very sticky wax, waxy texture. And usually my girls will help me, um peel these two because they think it's pretty fun so I will be having the exact uh, measurements down in the description so don't uh, don't forget to check that out so you can get the exact measurements you're also going to be needing uh, an onion a chile serrano and garlic cloves uh, my mistake was that I added the garlic and the onion to boil with the tomatillos my mother-in-law told me later on that she actually throws that in the blender so it's your preference so now I'm letting the tomatillos, the chile serrano, the onion, and the garlic come to a boil. And once it boils up like this, you will see the tomatillos change color and then we will be adding it to the blender. 
So now in my blender, I am adding uh, cilantro. You need to add a full cilantro. And then also too, I'm gonna be adding the Nor Suiza chicken bouillon. I added about two to three tablespoons, so you can taste it afterwards and see if you like it. But you're gonna need in total about three tablespoons because that's what I added. And then as well, the tomatillos. And then this is the part where she said that instead of boiling the onion like I did and the garlic, she adds it fresh to the blender. I think next time I will do it because I'm not using none of the water that I'm boiling with and most of the flavor of the onion and the garlic is already in that water that I won't be using. I did add a little bit of fresh water in there. And then for the people who do not like it spicy, you definitely need just that one chile serrano. You will not taste it It's or it won't even give it heat. It's just there to flavor it. If you want a little bit more of a kick, just a little kick, then use two chile serranos. And normally my mother-in-law uses two. Sometimes it will be spicy and sometimes it won't. For the most part, it won't. Just different chiles vary, but most of the time she adds two chile serranos. But if you do not want, you want a very mild taste, definitely just add one one and then this is the next step that I did backwards she usually adds a tablespoon of flour to the pot and then she mixes it with oil and then quickly adds the enchilada sauce to give it a quick mix to thicken it up and then after that adds about four cups of the chicken broth that I had to the side I did it backwards and added the flour the oil with the chicken broth and then added the sauce but it still turned out really good I just wanted to clarify that and definitely the next time she makes it I'm gonna try to film her so we can see the exact steps but like I said this turned out really good as as well still. So now we're going to be assembling our enchiladas and I'm going to be using a little bit of vegetable oil and I'm going to be using corn tortillas or tortillas de maíz and I'm just going to use them to toast up a little bit, fry them up a little bit, very very soft just so that they're able to roll. Definitely if you guys want to make your enchiladas in the oven, definitely go ahead and put them in the oven, use whatever cheese you like. This is just the way my mother makes them for my for my husband when he was growing up and the way she just keeps making them now so this is just the way we eat them but definitely i know they will be delicious if you bake these in the oven and put whatever kind of cheese on top so what i'm doing is i'm just giving it a quick flip this isn't sped up this is just regular time you can see it's very quick in and out and i try to uh get as much of the oil off and then I'm, i just make as many as i know everybody's gonna eat and then i will start assembling them in a bit So this is how I have everything set up. I have the shredded chicken, I have the lettuce, those are the tortillas that we use. And then I will start assembling, I put a little bit of the chicken on the corner and then I just make sure to nicely tight and roll them. Definitely toppings are going to be up to you. The only topping that I was missing that I forgot to buy at the store was queso cotija. And queso cotija depends if you get it already shredded. It looks very similar to Parmesan cheese. It's a dry cheese and it'll come in a block or a triangle and you can shred it at your house. It's very good on top of many Mexican dishes. You can put it on top of sopes, on top of tostadas, and on top of these. This is what my normally my mother-in-law uses queso cotija for. Like I said, it is a dry cheese and it gives it a lot of flavor, but I forgot 
forgot to get it so we just skipped it and we had lettuce and we had uh, sour cream and for me I used the Greek yogurt. My husband usually does not like sour cream but since we didn't have the queso cotija he asked me to put some sour cream on top. Also too aguacates or guacamole is also really good if we have them we'll add them and sometimes my mother-in-law even will add radishes you just slice up some radishes and add them on top and they're really good so definitely the toppings that you can add on top of those enchiladas verdes are endless as well as like I said if you definitely want to roll these up and layer them up in the oven and put some Monterey Jack cheese or any cheese that you guys want they will definitely be delicious I've had tried them in a party um, where they put the cheese on and in the oven and they also put like olives and it is so delicious so now I'm just adding the sauce I'm adding the lettuce that Mexican rice I will be putting the description if you guys are interested how I make it so you guys can go check that out but this is what we had this is my mother-in-law's recipe so many people request that they want to see it so I'm so happy you guys are requesting videos I really really do appreciate it and like I said the next time she makes it I will try to film her again uh, it's really good. Okay. <laughs> I thought my husband was my toughest critic, but if it doesn't taste like Nana, she won't eat it. <laughs> yeah. It's true, huh? Good job then? <coughs> okay. Daddy said that's good. That's not spicy that much. Yeah, I try not to make it spicy. Like Nana last time. So on this day we went over to my mother-in-law's and she made fried chicken, potato wedges, tostadas, and also to her corn and mayo lettuce uh, salad that she makes. It was so good. She also makes a salsa and it's just always a good time spending time with family. I also made some sopa de fideo. So if you guys are interested in either the recipe for the fried chicken and this dish, I will put a video where I made that as well as a video on how I made this sopa fideo. Uh oh, you okay? Pienso que algo de esto. No más no voy a hablar, eh. No, no te preocupes. No tienes que hablar si no quieres. Bueno, ¿y es Estela? ¿Cómo se llama la Stephanie? Ah, si le digo hi, Stephanie. Voltea la tortilla. Hola, las están a 60 veces, está buena, Hasta cuándo? Miércoles. No. ¿No? Oh, sí. So that was my beautiful mother-in-law that I'm always talking about. I really um, appreciate and so thankful to God that I got just a wonderful mother-in-law. She cooks so amazing. I've said it before. Uh, she can serve you a glass of water and it will taste better than if you would have served it yourself. Um, so grepas is not something that I knew about growing up, but they are very delicious. Uh, my mother-in-law shares this recipe with me. And this is just, you know, we're frying up the tortillas the same way we were to do the enchiladas. It has ground beef and it has like this creamy um, sauce to it that's very delicious with bell peppers I actually did film a video back in 2018 in November my husband did it for me with his phone uh, when I had just started my channel and for some reason I couldn't get that video up my laptop had broke and I was able to save it after getting it fixed so the next clip is gonna be my husband and my mother-in-law cooking together showing you guys how we make these crepas I will be putting all the ingredients down below for all the recipes that I mentioned so definitely go check this out and I hope you guys enjoy this week what's for dinner today I'm filming for my wife uh, we came to my mother's house and she is going to make some grepas, Mexican food. This is a recipe that you could get from from this video and learn more, I guess, more Mexican style food. Well, this is four pounds of meat. My wife, my mom uh, added some seasoning, the lorry seasoning. Uh, she also added this caldo de caldo con sabor de pollo and she will 
She will also add some tomato sauce, some some tomato dice, because right now she she's gonna go to like she's gonna go out, so she's doing it quicker with you know can can uh can dice tomatoes. So if you guys like this this uh this video and you know give give me a big thumbs up because I'm doing like a daddy duty and if you also uh, she put six garlics in the tomato she's gonna also use some bell peppers some tomato and some onion um, this is I uh, hope you subscribe and to get more recipes Mexican recipes we'll be we'll be filming this uh, more often so she could so you guys could see some more Mexican uh, recipes of food Mexican food so right now she added some tomato one tomato some onion and that no she said and now she's using the blender to blend all together so this is all blended the garlic onion tomato and that tomato slice canned tomato which is a diced tomato which is this one she used one of these and a fresh tomato that's how it looks um, from there she's gonna put it pour it inside of the, the meat which is still cooking which is still here Right now she's cook, cutting the bell pepper. She's gonna wash it. She took out all the veins with the seeds out. She's gonna slice them. I hope you guys like this. And like I said, it's my first time filming this, you know, doing a video for my wife. So right now she is smashing the meat so it could be like it won't be that many really lumpy you know uh, big lumps this should be like just the normal ground beef so after she's done with that she pours the chili bell pepper So now she's gonna use some Philadelphia cream cheese. Now she's pouring that tomato sauce that she made. And this is our daughter, Estrella. Hi! Hi! And mommy, just come in my ear. So she, this this jar is three pounds, and she's gonna put half of it because it's four pounds of ground beef. Hi 
Yeah, Estrella, how are you doing? Hi. She's just gonna leave this to sit down so the cream cheese could come out and you know everything get mixed up and we will come back to this video. So this is the when it's all done already, when it's all mixed up, when the, the cream cheese already blending with the ground beef and the tomato sauce. You can see like the peppers right there. And from there you you uh you fry this corn tortilla, corn tortilla yeah, into, into very, the, light. very light just so I could just you know get a little bit of oil and, and nice and you know wet yes. and from there you just do that you flip then, it just a little bit it's just, just not a, you don't have to let it get fried, hot, fried or hard like a tostada just just regular just so, just so it could be like you know uh, I don't know, nice and warm and ready to go. We'll be right back. We're gonna set, uh, serve up a plate. Okay. So pretty much, you layer the tortillas the way it looks right here, like a, like a, if it was a hamburger. You know, you put a tortilla, you know, deep fried, and then, then you put the meat and and with the bell pepper inside too, if you want. You know, and you spread it on the tortilla. And these are called grepas. And that's how they look pretty good so my mother-in-law made this so um shout out to her and thank you guys for watching and requesting this thank you to miss shade for requesting uh, mexican cooked food if you haven't tried this give this a try grepas um let me know in the comments if you do what kind of videos you want hit that subscribe button if you have if you haven't and as always thanks for watching guys bye so beautiful and i'm so lucky to be yours